Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my hardware guide series, and today we're going to be talking about the Sega Master System. The Sega Master System was released in 1986 in North America. It was the first cartridge-based system that Sega had actually released in North America. It was a it was mainly a trying to be like a competitor to Nintendo's Nintendo Entertainment System. And honestly, um, growing up, I didn't really see that many of them. I think I only saw one and it was one of the kids I was in Boy Scouts with. And honestly, the game that made the most impression on me was Ghostbusters. And I had a lot of fun playing it. And it wasn't until much, much, much later, like early 2000s, when I finally got my hands on one that was in good enough shape for me to want to, to have it. So this is a hardware guide for the Sega Master System. Now I'm here mainly to talk to you people who are new collectors that don't really know exactly what to look for in a Sega Master System. Uh, is there a good version? Is there a bad version? Um, is there something you, you need to look out for? So uh, I'm here to really just take out all of that fear from everything on collecting this system and help you actually enjoy collecting the Sega Master System. So the version one of the system, it kind of looked like this. It came with one or two controllers, depending on which version you purchased. Also, it came with something called a light phaser. Now, when you're going to look for one of these systems, you definitely want to make sure that you have the power and if you could all possible, the AV cable. Although the AV cable from a Sega Genesis Model 1 will work as well. The system, I do not believe it outputs stereo. I think it's mono only. So the yellow and white cable coming off the end should be just fine. The controllers are your basic controller. You will notice that there's not a start and select. So there is a little bit of a difference between that and the NES controller. Then there is the control stick, which is a right-handed stick with left-handed buttons, which is kind of odd, but that's a throwback to older arcade days. Kind of a holdover with that. Then there's the light phaser. It's your basic photon sensing light gun. Only works on a CRT, so if you don't have a CRT, don't really worry about it. Now, here's the interesting thing, is there's actually some built-in games on the version 1 of the system. Hang On and Safari Hunt is are like some of the games that are the most popular. You'll see those the most, and every once in a while you'll find Snail Maze. Also on the version 1 of the system, you'll notice that there are two game slots. There's the top one, and then there's the front card slot. The card games, honestly, nine times out of 10, they're not that great. There are a few good ones like Ghost House and stuff like that, but mainly a lot of people may just use this slot to use the 3D glasses. And yes, this, this thing with a CRT television, only a CRT, can present 3D games. Now, most of these games are labeled very obviously Zaxxon 3D or various other titles that just have 3D in the name. They are shutter style glasses, they're active so they do require power, they do require you that you have all of it. Now the version 2 of this console is not my favorite, but if you find one make sure that it has the correct power. Unfortunately it is RF only, so you cannot do composite out. And it does not have a front card slot, so you'll never be able to play any of those card games or use the 3D glasses with it either. Now it does have, the version two does have built-in games as well. Alex Kidd on Miracle World 
is actually a pretty good find as a built-in game. And it was one of those things where Sega decided that they were going to build games into their systems as opposed to having pack-ins. And it kind of reduced the production cost where they just stored it in the local memory of the system as opposed to creating a separate cartridge for it. Now, most of these games that are built into these systems are actually available on cartridge as well because there are earlier versions of these systems that have no game built into them whatsoever. But I really do hope that this does remove some of the fear of trying to collect for this system and that I'm able to welcome more gamers into collecting for the Sega Master System. It's a great game system. I absolutely love it. It's a definite change of pace from all of the Nintendo stuff in those early days. And like I said, I think it's got one of the best versions of Ghostbusters that I've played in a long time. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.